Joe, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and this is Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> so, welcome, Vince and Penny. You're our first pair on the show. How do you two know each other? We met a few years ago in a uh, production of Hello, Hello. Really? We did, yeah. Penny was playing Helga and taking her clothes off, and I was playing a gay Nazi. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone film this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Well, listen, best of luck this afternoon. Thank you very much. Uh, we welcome back Alex and Matthew. You were on the show last time. Today's your last chance to reach the final. Can you remind us how you two know each other? Yep. We um, met five years ago at university in Leeds. And um, when we moved down to London, we're housemates. What do you do now? Um, I'm a self-employed gardener. And uh, Matthew, are you in the gardening trade as well? I am, yeah. I work in schools oh. building food-growing gardens for primary school children. Oh, right. So do you work together? Occasionally, yeah, we do. Very good. Well, best of luck. Have you worked together to get through to the final this afternoon? Uh, welcome, Ben and Mike. How do you two know each other? Well, we met about three years ago, working together, but now I left, so we just meet up for a coffee and the occasional game show. <laughs> the occasional game show. Oh, how nice. I'm glad we're one of your occasional game shows. <laughs> um, com commendations on your hat as well. Far too few hats on this show. Always good to see. And welcome back to Vicky and Lisa. Remind us how you two know each other. My wife taught Lisa how to ride a motorbike. Very good indeed. And you now ride a motorbike better than anyone. Absolutely. Very, very good <laughs> indeed. Uh, well, we're going to find out more about all of you throughout the show. Uh, meanwhile, though, I'm not going to go a second further into the show before I've introduced my pointless friend, Richard. Richard. <laughs> Top of the afternoon to you. Hello, how are you? Couldn't be better. Good. Uh, a really good show uh, today. I think the first question is very, very interesting. I think if you can get past that, it should be plain sailing from there. Uh, we've got two returning couples. I think um, Alex and Matthew looking very, very confident. But uh, I am going to go out on a limb and put my money on Ben and Mike. You're going to curse them now with your tip. <laughs> Brilliant. Bad luck, guys. We'll see you next time. Um, we've asked all our questions on Pointless to 100 people before the show to stay in the game. All our players need to do is score as few points as they can. And they do that by coming up with those obscure answers that as few of those 100 people gave as possible. Now, the thing everyone's looking to do is find a pointless answer that none of our 100 people gave. And each time that happens, we will add £250 to today's jackpot. Nobody won the jackpot last time, so we add another £1,000 to that. So it starts off at £2,500. <laughs> Let's play pointless. Now, in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated and you have to be careful because if anybody gives me an incorrect answer, then this will happen. Uh, yeah, and it gets worse. You will score the maximum of 100 points and you don't want that. OK, guys, our first category this afternoon is... Religion. Nice, small category to get us going. Religion. Can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first and who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many religions in the British census as they could. Richard, religions in the British census. Yeah, we're looking for the things that people declared as their religion in the 2001 British census. That can mean two different things. Firstly, it's all the ones that you can tick, so, you know, that they put a load of them on the census itself. But they also have other, and uh, where more than 3,000 people have put the same other, we count those as a religion as well. Uh, there are 18 religions in the British census, and we're talking, just to warn you, about the big umbrella religions rather than the little denominations within them. Crikey. Right. Vince and Penny, you all drew lots before the show, and today you get to go first. Vince. Just drawing through my mind, I know certain things happen in the, in the census, famously, but... Yes. Uh, um, Are you going to take a punt on one of those certain things? No, because one it was a bit famous, I think. Uncertain things. Oh, yes, you're right, you're right, um, you're right. So I am going to go for Mormon. Mormon. Very good. We're looking for religions in the British census. You're hoping to score as few points as possible with Mormon. Let's see how many people said Mormon. Ah! Oh. Unfortunately, Mormon is a wrong answer. 
which means you score the maximum of 100 points. Richard, a wrong answer. Yeah, it does. I'm afraid it's not, uh, it's, it's not one of the religions on the, on the British census form. I'm afraid. Is it a subsection of another, maybe? Quite so. Ah, I see. It's not an umbrella religion. OK, on to Alex. Alex, how confident are you feeling with this? Um, well, following that surprise there, I think I'm just going to play it pretty safe and go for Buddhism. We're hoping to score as little with this as possible. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Buddhism. It is correct. 37, Alex, not bad. Not a bad score. Richard, Buddhism, that's more like it. Yeah, that's much more like it. There were 149,000 Buddhists on the, uh, the British census of 2001. Ben, what are you going to say? I'm going to take a bit of a gamble and go pagan. Splendid. You're going to go pagan. So to speak. <laughs> Looking forward to that. <laughs> Let's see how many people said pagan. It's correct. Oh, it's good. Look at that. Four. Well done, Ben. That gives you a score of four. Richard, Pagan. Yeah, Pagans. There are more than 30,000 of them in Britain, uh, according to the recent census. Uh, Vicky, we are looking for religions in the British census. Mm. You, you, you look very happy with this, very confident. <laughs> well, I was going to go with one of the previous two answers. <sighs> so uh, I've had to... Think. So we're <laughs> going to go with atheist. Atheist? Yes. OK. Let's see how many of our 100 people said atheist. Well, it's right. Very good. Six. <laughs> good answer, Vicky. That scores you six points. Richard, atheist. Yeah, atheist. How many confirmed atheists do you think there are according to the most recent census? Over a million. Only 10,000 people called themselves atheists on the census. A piffling I, amount. I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at the scores. Well, we've got a pretty wide-ranging field there. Ben and Mike looking very good on four. Lovely low score there from Ben. Keep that up and you'll definitely be through to the next round. Vince and Penny. Oh, dear, an inauspicious start there. Yes. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? Lisa. <laughs> we are looking for religions on the British census. Vicky's done fantastically there with Atheist. Uh, what else um, is out there? Mm, I'm sure people put some very odd things down on their census. I'm going to go with Taoist. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Vincent Penny are the high scorers there with 100. You have to score... You don't have to score that low, actually, to get through. You have to score 93 or less. There's the red line. Come below that red line. And you will be through to the next round. Taoist, you're saying? Let's see how many of our 100 people said Taoist. And let's see if it's a correct answer. It is correct. Oh, it's good. On. Maybe it's going all the way. Go on, go on, go on. Go on. Oh! Fantastic low score there. <laughs> Fabulous low score. I'm afraid it wasn't pointless. Just one person put Taoist. And that gives you a score of one and takes your score up to seven. Richard, Taoist, good answer. Yeah, Taoism. It's an ancient Chinese tradition and there were 3,500 of them in Britain according to the most recent census. Thank you very much. A good answer there from Lisa. Now, Mike, we're looking for religions in the British census. I'm going to try Wiccan. You're going to try Wiccan? <laughs> Let's see if Wiccan is a correct answer, and if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said it. It's right! I think this is going all the way down. Oh! oh. <laughs> That's a fabulous low score. A score of one, which takes your total up to five. An impressive total. Wiccan, Richard. Tell yeah, me what on earth it is. Yes, uh, Wicca is exactly right. It's an ancient form of witchcraft, and there are... More than 7,000 of them uh, in Britain. Brilliant. Well done, Mike. Oh, dear. Matthew, you've got an awful lot to do here. Well, How when... are you feeling? Have, you had all, have all your answers been said by other people? A few of them. That's the excuse I'd use if I were standing yeah. where you're standing. Um, 
when I left university, I worked in a library, and when the very boring task of cashing up, there was a Religions of the World poster uh. on the wall. But I have no idea whether there's 3,000 of them or not, but I'm going to go for Shinto. Shinto? Shinto. You won't be scoring 62 or less. There's your red line. Below that red line, and you are through. That'll be terrible news for Vincent Penny, but great for you. Let's see if that poster was right, if uh, Shinto is indeed a religion in the British census, and how many of our 100 people said it. Oh! oh dear, oh, dear. Sadly, that has scored you the maximum of 100 points and taken your total up to 137. Bad news for the Shintoists, who clearly don't make the 3,000 grade. Great news for Penny and Vince, a possible lifeline for them. Shinto, Richard, Shinto. Yeah, it's not, uh, it's, 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 it's not on the census, I'm afraid. That's uh, really bad luck. You should never, ever, ever trust what you read in the library, kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Penny, you've been thrown a lifeline there. If you score 36 or less, you and Vince are stepping through to the next round. Um, I think I'm going to play it fairly safe. And I'm going to say Sikhism. You're going to say Sikhism and hope that scores 36 or less. There's your red line. If you're below that, you're through to the next round. Above it, and we say goodbye to you. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Sikhism. Well, it's correct. Look at that. Down it goes. Good enough. Well, Sikhism scores you 29 points, takes your total up to 129, and by the skin of your teeth, <laughs> you are through to the next round. Sikhism, Richard. Yeah, great answer. There are actually 336,000 Sikhs in Britain, according to the most recent census. Very good. So that's the end of round one, and the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid, is Alex and Matthew. Bad luck, guys. Should oh. have played it safer. You should, should have, have possibly it, yeah. played it, but I thought Shinto was a really good answer. Well, it's that poster in the library. I'll go back and scrub them off that. I think you meant you better. I, I just take the whole library out if I were you. <laughs> Honestly. Uh, Richard, what should they have said if they'd wanted to stay in? Well, I think Vince very nearly at the beginning went for uh, Jedi. Yes. That's I'm very much mistaken. And, and Jedi uh, wasn't answered. There were actually 390,000 Jedis in Britain on the, on the most recent census. Uh, but Jedi would have scored you five points. It wasn't oh. the pointless, but it's... Uh... No, no. Vince, you were thinking Jedi is what everyone would know about that, weren't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. There were three pointless answers, though, so if you've got any of these at home, well done. Let's take a look. Uh, Zoroastrianism. There are more than uh, 3,500 of them in Britain. Hello, if you're watching. Uh, Rastafarianism. There are over 4,000 Rastafarians, according to the latest census. All of these figures are according to that census. Uh, and humanist. There are 8,000 people, just over 8,000, who call themselves humanists. Let's take a look at the worst answers you could have given. These are the things that uh, most of our 100 people said. Uh, in third, it was uh, Judaism, which scored you 42 points. Then uh, Christian, which scored you 62 points. And the most of all, more than Christian? Islam. Islam, Muslim, yeah, would have scored you a whopping 69 points. Fascinating. <laughs> um, Alex and Matthew, sadly, you didn't have the, uh, the pointless British religion in a census knowledge you needed to get through to the next round. So I'm afraid it's so sad. We said, we said goodbye to you early on in both of these games. Yeah, I know. But uh, thanks very much. You've been fantastic contestants. Thanks for playing pointless. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's time for round two. Now, obviously, only two pairs make it through to the head-to-head, -head, so one of the teams is not going to be very happy. You just have to make sure it's not you. The category for our second round this afternoon is... Sport. <laughs> Tortured look from Vicky and Lisa there. Uh, can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first and who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many British horse races as they could. Richard, British horse races. Yep. Um, the correct answers here are all national hunt or flat races in the British sporting calendar. In round two, we're going to give you a choice of seven possible answers in each pass. And I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless. But do be careful, there's also at least one incorrect answer amongst the seven. Pick one of those and you'll score the maximum of 100 points. OK, your first set of seven answers are... Falmouth Stakes, 2,000 Guineas, St Ledger, Golden Jubilee Stakes, Belmont Stakes, Derby, 
St. James's Palace steaks. Hmm. Penny's just digesting all that. <laughs> Not looking greatly comfortable. As always, the most obscure answers will score you the lowest points, but do be careful and try not to pick one of those incorrect answers, because obviously you will score the maximum of 100 points. Uh, so we are looking for British horse races. Penny. Um, we had a holiday down in the southwest, and I think there was a race course there, so I'm going to go for Falmouth, Falmouth Stakes. Okay. You stayed in or near Falmouth? We did. Did there were a lot of horse boxes on the road at the time? And... Uh, it was fairly flat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm fairly certain we drove past a, a race course. But right. I, obviously, I'll find out soon whether I was right or not. You will find out. OK, well, let's put it to the test. Let's see if it's a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said Falmouth stakes. It's correct. Down it goes. Look at that. See, that's why you went on that holiday. Exactly. You might have wondered off. at the time, but now off. you know. Well done, you. A pointless Thank answer. Thank you very much. That adds £250 to today's jackpot, right. taking the total up to £2,750. <laughs> <laughs> so, Richard, the Falmouth Stakes. Yeah, you know, it really does pay off holidaying in the West Country because the, Fal <laughs> the Falmouth Stakes is held every year at Newmarket in Cambridgeshire. <laughs> <laughs> so, na named after Viscount Falmouth, the 19th century horse breeder. Very good. Well done. However you got there, that has given you a score of nothing. OK, Mike, there may very well be another pointless answer in there. If there is, I don't know what it is. <laughs> OK, do you know anything about horse racing? Not at all. Um, there is, of course, at least one incorrect answer in there. Yeah. I'm going to go with St Ledger. St Ledger. Let's see if it is a correct answer. How many of our 100 people said it's St Ledger? It's good. Very good. See, I think you knew all about horse racing. You're just <laughs> keeping it under your hat, I guess. Um, Richard, uh, <laughs> St Ledger. Uh, yes, yeah, St Ledger, one of the classics held every year in Doncaster. Good answer. OK, well, that gives you a score of 17. On now to Vicky. Now, Vicky, <laughs> you obviously know all about horse racing. Obviously not. Um, Let's just go for it. Let's go with, um, Derby. Derby. <laughs> let's see if it's a correct answer, and if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said it. It's oh. correct. <laughs> Very famous, <laughs> as it turns out. 67 of our 100 people said Derby. That scores you 67 points. The Derby, Richard. Yeah, uh, probably, I don't want to tell you this, Vicky, probably the, the single most famous horse race in the history of the world, I would think, the Derby. Right. Um, <laughs> named after the Earl of Derby. He won a coin toss with Sir Charles Bunbury to name the race. Would have been called the Bunbury if he'd lost that. I think I prefer the Derby. Yeah, only because you know it. If it was called the Bunbury. You'd have a donkey Bunbury otherwise, wouldn't you? <laughs> I just think, and I think that, just, that sounds like a sort of pie that you would want to eat. <laughs> OK, let's take a look at the others. We've already had uh, the Derby, the St Leisure and the Falmouth uh, Stakes. Uh, the 2000 Guineas, uh, usually race at Newmarket, that would have scored you 14 points. Uh, and of the other three, there are two more pointless answers there, and there's one wrong answer. Uh, the St James's Palace Stakes and the Golden Jubilee Stakes, uh, both usually run at Ascot. Both would have been pointless answers. Both would have added £250 to the jackpot. Well done if you've got either of those at home. And uh, if anybody said the Belmont Stakes, that, uh, it is a horse race, but it's in the United States, and so that was a wrong answer. Uh, well, we are halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scoreboard. Wow, another broad field, as you might say. Uh, Vincent Penny looking fantastic there with no points at all. Vicky and Lisa, 67 there. Um, you're going to have to try, Lisa, when it comes to your turn to find a pointless answer. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, I'm going to put seven more answers on the board, and we are looking for British 
horse races. Here are your next seven possible contenders. The Christmas Hurdle, 1,000 guineas, Grand National, Windsor Park Plate, 5,000 guineas, Champion Hurdle, Oaks. Again, I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless, and there's also at least one incorrect answer amongst them, so do try and avoid those. Lisa. Um, Windsor Park Plate. Windsor Park Plate sounds very likely, doesn't it? You are currently the high scorers, if I needed to remind you that, of 67. That's your score. You want to be scoring as little as possible with this to minimise your chances of being eliminated at the end of this round. Let's see if it's a correct answer, and if it is, how many of our 100 people said it? Windsor Park Plate. Oh! oh. Didn't that sound Crashed like a likely burned, answer? Yeah. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> well, that takes you up to 167. I'm afraid, incontestably, you are going to be leaving at the end of this round, I'm sorry to say. Richard, Windsor Park Plate. Yeah, I'm sorry, Lisa. It's, uh, it is a horse race, but it's in New Zealand. It does sound like an English horse race, but we do that sometimes. Sorry. Um, right, well, Ben, there you are. You're through to the next round. Why not, you know, even if you make the biggest mistake you could possibly make here. You're still through. Try and eke out that pointless answer. I'm looking for the pointless. We're going to say 5,000 guineas. The 5,000 guineas. OK, if it is pointless, it'll add another 250 quid to our jackpot, which would be very welcome. Let's see if it's correct. And let's see how many of our 100 people said the 5,000 guineas. Oh, no! I'm afraid that scores you the maximum of 100 points. So that takes your score up to 117, a high score, but it's not as high as 167. You're definitely through to the next round. 5,000 guineas. Yeah, we made that up as well, but it's, it's the right thing to do. When you can't get knocked out, all, all you've got to do is go for that point. Let's see if you can get another £250. Well done. Good, good... Wrong answer. Good punt. Yeah, exactly. Good, good, a, a, really a good, good wrong, wrong answer. answer yeah. A wrong answer, but wrong <laughs> for the right reasons. Yeah. <laughs> OK, well, Vince and Penny, you're obviously definitely through to the next round. There could still be another incorrect answer in there, of course, but there is most certainly a pointless answer in there. And I can't lose. You can't lose. I'm going to go for the Christmas hurdle. I was really hoping you'd go for that. I love the sound of the Christmas hurdle. <laughs> Let's see if it exists. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the Christmas hurdle. Oh, it's correct. I think this is going quite a long way down. Look at that! Well done, Vince! <laughs> For the first round. <laughs> you truffled out the pointless there. Uh, that is a pointless answer. It adds another £250 to today's jackpot, which takes the total up to £3,000. Well done! That gives you, after the second pass, a score of zero. A double pointless, a double O, an O. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, the Christmas hurdle. Yes, yeah, so the first double pointless of the series. We don't see that very often. Uh, we've, we've got all the pointlesses and the wrong answers on there, so we'll just take you through the others. Uh, the champion hurdle, which is held at Cheltenham, uh, would have scored you uh, only two points, funnily enough. Uh, the Oaks, which is another horse race. Uh, the, the Earl of Derby set that one up as well, but. Uh, couldn't call it the Derby, he called it the Oaks, which is the name of his house in Epsom. Uh, 1,000 guineas is a real horse race. And, of course, Grand National was the, uh, the worst answer you could have given uh, if you're going to give a correct one, 78 points. So, at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score is, I'm sorry to say, it's Vicky and Lisa. <laughs> I'm sorry, your, your subjects didn't really seem to come up. What would you have loved to have mm. had? Mm. Food. <laughs> I thought hospitality provided it. Do you not get any lunch? What, <laughs> what else? Rugby would have rugby, been good. Yes. Yeah. Like, like a bit of rugby. Art, maybe. Yeah, some art would be good. Oh, some movies. movies. Anything. <laughs> anything but racehorsing. Well, racehorsing. Horsing. Is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> racehorsing. Horse racing. Is, uh, that's a round we should have, actually. <laughs> racehorsing. Let's do that. Race race <laughs> oh, I like that. Um, anyway, I'm sorry you, uh, we have to say goodbye to you at this stage. You've been fantastic contestants. Thanks so much for playing Pointless. Thank you. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> well done. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, 
Obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for the jackpot, which currently stands, in case you'd forgotten, at £3,000. <laughs> A lot of thanks to Vince and Penny for that. You're going head-to-head -head on up to five questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer. Now, you're allowed to confer. OK, that's the good news. Uh, all you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair to win that question. And the first pair to win three will be playing for today's jackpot. OK, let's play Pointless. <laughs> right, here's your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many members of the A-team as they could. Nice cerebral question. Yeah. Richard. <laughs> Yeah, we're looking for the character names of any of the four members of the A-Team from the original TV series. The character names, not the names of the actors. OK, Ben and Mike, um, you've played the best throughout this game, but only just, uh, so you get to go first. Uh, we are going to go with Face Man. Face Man. Vincent Penny, the A-Team. I think I know all four, and I'm going to go for um, Murdoch. Two really good answers. Face Man from Ben and Mike, who are in gold, and Murdoch from Vincent Penny in blue. Let's go in the order they were answered. Ben and Mike, Face Man in gold. Let's see if it's a correct answer. And how many of our 100 people said it? Face Man. Oh, it's good. <laughs> They're all going to be high scorers, I reckon. So 42 is not a bad score. And Vince and Penny have said Murdoch. Oh, it's good enough. <laughs> so after the first question, it is one nil to Vince and Penny. Murdoch and Face Man. Yeah, uh, well done, Penny. Howling Mad Murdoch is actually the best answer you, you, you could have given. And Face Man's the worst answer you could have given, funnily enough. Let's take a look at all four of them, see how they scored. Uh, Murdoch, they were 27. Hannibal Smith would have scored you 31. Uh, B.A. Baracus, 32. <laughs> and uh, Face Man, 42. I love the 18. Do you? Loved it. No, I don't anymore, really. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm absolutely honest. <laughs> OK, after the first question, it is 1-0 to Vince and Penny. Here's your second question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many countries beginning with G as they could. Countries beginning with G, Richard? Yeah, there are 11 countries in the world beginning with G. As always, by country, we mean a sovereign state that is a member of the UN. OK, this time it is Vincent Penny's turn to go first. We're looking for countries beginning with G. Ben and Mike seem to have landed on one. Quite pleased with it, Mike's smiling. <laughs> They've landed on one. <laughs> I think they're quite pleased with it. Vincent Penny, what's your answer? We are going to go for Georgia. Georgia. Ben and Mike, what are you going to say? We're going to say Guinea-Bissau. Oh, 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 I see why you were smiling. <laughs> Guinea-Bissau. Guinea-Bissau. <laughs> OK, well, we're going to put them to the test in the order they were given. Vincent Penny in blue have said Georgia. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Georgia. Good, 19. Look at that. <laughs> Let's see how many of our 100 people said Guinea-Bissau and if it is a correct answer. It is correct. Let's see how far down this goes. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Good answer, Ben and Mike. Guinea-Bissau wins you that point, so you are one all after the second question. Richard, great answer. Yeah, that's, that, that's the way to do it. Guinea-Bissau, the best possible answer you could have given. It's the lowest score you could have got in this round. As I say, there are 11 countries in the world beginning with G. Uh, let's take a, a look at all of them, see how many you got. Guinea-Bissau, best one we could have had. Uh, staying in West Africa, we've got Gabon and Guinea. Then uh, heading to sort of South America, Grenada and Guyana. Uh, six more. Georgia, we said that we've already had from Vincent Penny, we've got you 19. Uh, Guatemala with 26, then back to Africa for Gambia and Ghana. And uh, we finish off in Europe, Greece, and as so often, Germany on top. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
OK, after two questions, it is one all. Here comes your third question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many decathlon events as they could. Richard, decathlon events. Yeah, looking for any of the events that make up the, uh, the modern Olympic decathlon. Uh, it won't surprise you to know there are 10 correct answers here. <laughs> mm. OK, Ben and Mike, once again, it's your turn to start. I'm going to go with discus. You're going to go with discus. Vince and Penny. Um, you was having a discussion. I was trying to think. I know there's lots of kind of picture, three uh, running ones, aren't there? But kind of um, Peter yeah. Daly Thompson, <laughs> Daly Thompson doing <laughs> something. Um, but, uh, we think, yeah, we're going to go with it. Yeah, that yeah. whole uh, backflip business. We're going to go for the um, pole, pole vault. vault. Pole vault. OK, Ben and Mike said discus. Ben and Mike in gold. Let's see how many of our 100 people said discus. Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine, not a bad score. But how will it do against pole vaulting, I wonder? Well, it's correct. Oh! Pips discus. Very evenly matched pairs we have here. After three questions, it is now 2-1 to Vince and Penny. Richard, pole vaulting and discus. Yeah, good answers again. I imagine everyone at home is doing what uh, Penny and Vince were doing, which is picturing Daley Thompson <laughs> doing things in your mind. That's about the only way to, uh, to guess the decathlon events. Let's take a look at all ten of them and see what, what the best scores were. Uh, 1,500 metres, which is always the last event in the decathlon, would have been the best thing you could have said, would have got you 12, followed by 400 metres. Then we had pole vault and discus, which are obviously both very good answers, 110 metre hurdles, and the worst five, shot put, 100 metres, Javelin, then uh, the two jumps, high jump and long jump. Well done if you've got all ten of those at home. Thanks very much, Richard. Vincent Penny being on two points are only one point away from getting straight through to the final and having a crack at our jackpot. Um, so, Ben and Mike, pressure's on you this time round. You've got to win this one. Here is your fourth question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many play school toys as they could, <laughs> from the sublime to the ridiculous. Uh, Richard, play could, school toys. Could we get any more highbrow? <laughs> uh, we're looking for the names of any of the five original toys from the series Play School, which is the most obscure of those. This time it is Vincent Penny's turn to go first. We are looking for play school toys. We think, okay. we think we know all five, so... That's pleasing. Which is always right. good news. We're going to go for the scariest one. The scare... Oh, I'd be interested to hear oh, which yeah. one you thought was the scariest. I, I always thought so. Hamble. We're going to go for Hamble. Yeah, I concur. I'm not going <laughs> to argue with that. That's <laughs> absolutely right. Right, Ben and Mike, the pressure is on you. You've really got to get this one right. You've got to beat them. i go with the only one I can remember is Humpty. <laughs> Humpty. Hamble and Humpty. <laughs> Who ever thought this would be <laughs> two answers for a question that might see one of you walk off with three grand? Uh, in the order they were given, Vincent Penny in blue, they have said Hamble. Absolutely, you're right, the scariest of all the toys in that cupboard. Look at that, nine. That's a very, very good answer. Nine for Hamble. OK, Ben and Mike. That's the score you have to get below. Let's hope Humpty can do it for you, otherwise I'm afraid we say goodbye to you. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Humpty. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's not good enough. I'm afraid that only scores you 25. It's just not quite low enough. So the score after the fourth question is 3-1 to Vince and Penny. Richard, the play school toy cupboard. Yeah, Talk so us we've, had, uh, we've had Hamble and Humpty. Mm -hmm. you sound like a firm of Dorset solicitors. Uh, <laughs> hello, Hamble and Humpty. <laughs> um, so Penny, you reckon you can name all five? What, what are the three Indeed. we've missed? We think the other three are Jemima, 
and then Big Ted and Little Ted. Absolutely right. Uh, let's take a look at all five. Uh, Hamble was far and away the best answer you could have given, actually. Then uh, yeah, Jemima, Humpty, and then uh, the two Teds, Little Ted, and then Where He Belongs. Very much the Germany of play school toys. <laughs> Big Ted, right at the top. <laughs> OK, thank you very much, Richard. So the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid, is Ben and Mike. Bad luck, bad luck. Um, you have done fantastically well throughout the game, actually. What were your... I mean, do you have particular specialist areas, or are you just brilliant at all of them? I'm hoping for movies. Maybe flags. Flags. I'm good flags. at countries. Flags and <laughs> movies. Obscure countries. Are you pleased how you've done today? Yeah, yeah, very pleased. Yeah, Yeah, I think you should be. I think you should be. You've done very well indeed. Um, I'm sorry that you've come so close to the final without making it, but, of course, everyone gets two chances on the show. So we will see you again next time. Uh, look forward to that very much. But, meanwhile, thanks very much for playing on Pointless. Thank you. But for Vincent Penny, it's now time for our pointless final. Well, congratulations, Vincent Penny. You've fought off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. That is what this show is all about. And now, as a sort of afterthought, you have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. At the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at an impressive £3,000. That's, <laughs> that's largely through your efforts. Uh, the rules are very simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer that no one else could think of. We've had two pointless answers on the show today, and you gave us both of them. So let's hope you can just find one more now and win that £3,000. First, you've got to choose a category from these three options, and your choices are... The Round Table, Classic Novels, or US Sports. US Sports, I think we can write off yeah, pretty swiftly, we're... can't we? OK. Yeah, do that. Um, um, we're tossing up classic how novels. How much do you know about something like, if it's the round table as in Merlin, I do know a very uh, obscure answer Arthur. to do that. Was I, there there's just one on title I've got in my head from a book at primary school <sighs> that okay. I've never heard of before or since. Oh, okay. brilliant. Trust but you. Are we going to hang it on that? I trust <laughs> you. Okay. Let's go for round table. Uh, Vince and Penny are going to go for round table. We gave 100 people, 100 seconds to name as many members of the round table as they could. That's exactly what you wanted to hear. Richard, yeah, tell us there, the there have been many, many tales written about the Knights of the Round Table, but we're looking specifically for one of the 25 names inscribed on the Winchester Round Table in the Great Hall at Winchester Castle. You now have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that £3,000 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. OK, your 60 seconds start now. OK, well, right. the obvious one. Lancelot. Lancelot. Arthur. Arthur. I don't know any others, I'm so sorry. The, the one name that has crept up from somewhere in the depths of my mind is Gawain. OK. Now, whether he was Gawain the Green Knight or Gawain and the Green Knight, I don't know. But okay. no, there, right, there well, are three I, names. I don't know, so we'll go for those three. Only place I've ever heard of that. OK. OK, we'll go for that. We'll go for that. OK, we can stop the clock. You've given your three answers, and they are... Arthur. Arthur. Lancelot. 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 Gawain. And Gawain. Gawain. All right, we'll put them up on the board in that order. Your first answer is Arthur. Second answer is Lancelot. And third answer is Gawain. OK, we were looking for members of the round table. You only need one pointless answer for you to win that jackpot of £3,000. Let's see how many of our 100 people said King Arthur. <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> it's correct. OK, well... £3,000. I don't think that was a massive surprise, was no, it? No, not 57. I'm surprised it was so Only low, 57 yeah. people. <laughs> Blimey. Um, OK, yes, 57, obviously not a pointless answer. So uh, you've lost your first crack at the jackpot. We were looking for members of the round table. Let's hope nobody said your next answer. This would have to be a pointless answer for you to win the jackpot with it. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Sir Lancelot. <laughs> 62 of our 100 people said 
Lancelot, so that is not a pointless answer. So what would you, what would you spend £3,000 on? We are getting married later this year. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> so it will uh, go on a honeymoon and that answer is standing between me and a Caribbean cruise. <laughs> if we get it wrong, then I think it will be a caravan on the Isle of Wight. <laughs> oh, well, let's hope you get it wrong. Caravan on the Isle of Wight. <laughs> <laughs> if you are there, you must, the, the campsite you must go to is the one just outside. I'm sorry, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> OK, it's all hanging on Garwain. I mean, if Garwain is correct, let's hope it goes all the way down to the bottom and there's a pointless answer for you. It is your last crack at the jackpot. We are looking for members of the round table. You said this was your most confident answer. In fact, you picked this whole category on the strength of this man's oh, name. <sighs> this has to be pointless. We've really got to hope that good old Sir Garwain is going to ride to your aid here. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said Garwain. It's correct. That's a start. This is for £3,000. This will really make your honeymoon go with a bang if it's pointless. Oh, oh no! <laughs> uh. Unfortunately. Unlucky 13. Unfortunately, <laughs> unlucky 13. Cows, here we come. <laughs> Unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that all-important pointless answer, so you don't win today's jackpot of £3,000, which rolls over to the next show. But you've been amazing contestants, and you do get to take home our pointless trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Bad luck. Richard, what answers should they have given if they'd wanted to, to find one of those elusive knights? You actually gave us the three most popular answers there were. Oh. Closely followed by Galahad, Percival and Bedivere. My favourite, Sir Gareth, got uh, three points. Uh, there were nine oh. pointless answers. Nine out of those 25 nights were pointless. At home, if you got any of these, firstly, well done, and secondly, apologies for my pronunciation, because a lot of them are in French. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, Sir, Sir Tristan de, de Leon, Sir Mordred, Sir Bruno le Noir. That means Sir Bruno the Black. Good French, good French. Thanks. Uh, Le Cote Maltai, uh, Sir Gwyn Glen, Sir Alimir, and three more. Dude, really well done if you got any of these. Uh, Sir Bleoberis, Sir Dagor, Sir Pelias. Sir Pelias. Which is the name of an Italian restaurant in Bentner, which uh, you might want to visit. <laughs> in where? Bentner. Really? Yeah, on the Isle of Wight. It's lovely. Mm. Uh, well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to Vincent Penny, but you've been fantastic contestants. Thank you both for playing. Thanks so much. Thank you. So nobody's won our jackpot today, so it rolls over again, which means on the next show, we'll be playing for the staggering sum of... £4,000. <laughs> Join us next time, see if someone can win it on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.